morning, good morning everyone. This was not meant to look ghoulish, but we are low on power today, so I am presenting by lantern light. <laughs> we are going to talk about making an elderberry tincture and having faith like a child. So I'd like to ask you guys out there, how many of you have already made a tincture in your lifetime and enjoy making such things? Good morning, Chad. And I'd also like to ask you guys that if um, you enjoy watching these videos every week, tell others about them, share them on your Facebook pages and on other social media. Um, help me get the word out so that we can reach more people. And for those of you that are new to our channel, my name is Tammy Treyer. I am an author and writer, and I blog at treyerwilderness.com and share my family's lifestyle. We live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho and live very frugally and self-reliant, and we enjoy sharing our journey and knowledge with others. And we also educate at... Thank you, Chad. And we also educate at treyerwildernessacademy.com where we actually share our knowledge um, in a classroom setting. So right now you can go over there and check out our free bread baking course and take that if you are new to making bread or have been unsuccessful in making a loaf of uh, wholesome homemade bread. Jump over there and partake on our free course. You will also be shortly finding a class, a free class on learning how to knit because this is the perfect season to dive into learning how to knit and then progressing in your knowledge to learn how to make your, your family's socks because there's nothing better and more durable than wool socks. So I am busy making elderberry things. Um, on, I think it was Saturday, I jumped on and did a quick impromptu video on uh, utilizing elderberries. Good morning, Holly. And I love elderberries. Elderberries are something I grew up on. My mother would make jelly and we'd have pies. And I shared that video on making juice the other day. So if you missed that, you can find all of our archive videos um, under our Facebook page and also on YouTube. So don't hesitate to check them out. And um, you can go to YouTube very easily and find us by going to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube. To make a tincture, it's a little different. You put your elderberries in a jar. Now, obviously, um, I did not complete this. Uh, for those of you that are new to making tinctures, this is not the accurate amount of elderberries. I just put some in the jar. You can use any size jar you like. It doesn't have to be a quart jar. I like wide mouth jars anymore regardless what I'm working with because they are easier to clean, easy to get in and out of, and um, I just prefer the wide mouth jars. So what you would do is you would fill this jar to the top, giving yourself an inch of head space at the top of the jar with the elderberries. And I have in the description below some um, resources. I also have notes and I have the elderberry uh, tincture material list there as well. Um, now once you have this full you have two options. You can use a non-GMO glycerin in here or you can use a non-GMO 100 proof vodka in here. Now honestly um, I've always used the vodka. Um, I prefer that because I feel it has a stronger um, taste to it um, and I just I just prefer that over the oil um, so it's personal preference if you prefer or need to stay away from alcohol glycerin is an al other alternative now keep in mind if you use glycerin what you want to do is you want to actually take the back of your wooden spoon and break up these berries a little bit so that they will go into the glycerin easier with the uh, vodka you do not need to do that um, but I do highly recommend that you use non-GMO sourced materials when you're making these things. You've got non-GMO goods here that are untainted and it would be awful to then try to feed your family an elderberry tincture to help them overcome colds and to build their immune system when you're using toxic ingredients. So that's really important um, as far as I'm concerned. That is a must. 
Good morning, Tammy. So making a tincture is really, really easy. That's all you need to do is put your berries in here, fill them about an inch away from the top, and then add your vodka or glycerin. Again, if you're using the glycerin, break up your berries a little bit. Put your lid on here, put your ring on there, and put this in a warm, dark place. And leave it there for about three to four weeks. And during that three to four week period, you can turn this upside down and move this around to give um, the berries an opportunity to get saturated. And at the end of your four week period, you can just drain the liquid out of here and put that in a dark container and put that in your herbal pantry. Again, in a dark place. And that will last you all winter long. Um, hello, Donna. And um, that is a great, great remedy to have on hand. Elderberries are useful for so much. They are extremely high in antioxidants. They are a cancer fighter. They are immune boosting. They are healing. Um, another thing you can do with these is when you make your juice. I was using my juicer in the video the other day, so check that out. Um, but when you have your juice, you can also pour that juice into ice cube trays and freeze that. And when someone gets sick in your family, you can pull an ice cube out and put it in um, a small glass of water or even hot water and um, just let them drink that. It's a great way to store your um, elderberries. Also, um, if you don't want to use glycerin or you don't want to use alcohol. So in the notes below you will find links. Now the non-GMO vodka can be hard to find depending where you are. Um, Smirnoff makes a number 21 non-GMO vodka but it's not available in Idaho. Uh, there are other non-GMO sourced vodkas. You're just going to have to do a little research online to see what's available to you and, and go that route. Now there is potato made um, Vodkas also that are more likely to be a non-GMO. Again, you need to check though. Um, but they may, and some of them may be like an 80 proof, but that's still better and and um, more usable at an 80 proof than a 100 proof that's not non-GMO in my opinion. So just some useful, helpful information because if you're making something that's wholesome for your family, you want it to be wholesome through and through. So how many of you guys make tinctures and, and salves and ointments and things at, at home yourselves? And I said earlier, I wasn't trying to make today a ghoulish day since today is Halloween, but it's, we are low on power and I didn't want to, I'm trying not to use the generator more than I have to. So I am running my lantern today and uh, trying to get some natural lighting in here. So hopefully you guys can see me okay. <laughs> now, um... I wanted to mention a couple things today. Um, I've been posting these videos on YouTube as well. I was behind schedule. Um, our life has been really, really crazy this year. Okay, Tammy has made tinctures. Uh, do you use elderberries? What have been some of the tinctures that you made? Just curious if you are interested in sharing. Oh, dandelion salve. That's another good one. Yes, yes. I love 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 making my own products I've been doing that for 10 12 years and just absolutely love being able to make my own face creams my own soaps I use charcoal soap all the time which has been really awesome and pulling the toxins out of my skin so I've been really thankful for natural remedies over the last three years especially um, but this year has been a really heavy weighted year for us we have had a particular, we've had a lot going on. Um, it's not just one thing for us. Um, it's been a lot. And I have shared bits and pieces. Next week I'm going to share a thorough testimony with you. I can't share that this week yet, but I will share one next week with you. Um, but Monday, the 29th, um, God tremendously blessed our family. Um, one of the biggest and heaviest weights we've been carrying all year, finally, um, through the grace of God and through strong faith and trust in Him and God's timing, um, that weight has been lifted from us. And I don't know where you're located, all of you, but I'm sure 
that you probably heard this really strange sound Monday evening while we were celebrating in Idaho. <laughs> and it's a really good thing. We are not out of the woods by any means, but the main thing that was causing us such stress and constant up and downs because every month um, there were repercussions and uncertainties of this particular weight and um, it was a lot to carry. It was a strong burden for us all and um, it took a lot of courage uh, for each of us um, each day to get up, really. It was a really, really big, heavy weight. So God is good. And I want to share with you um, what I shared. I need my big eyes, sorry. Um, with, my, with the Facebook audience on Monday. It's encouragement. And I want you guys to realize how important this is. We talked last week about having faith as part of our arsenal. And our, our survival arsenal. And it's really true, guys. And the other thing is building those faith muscles. And we talked about that, too. This is what I wrote on, on Monday. I just wanted to take the time to encourage you all to have extreme faith and trust in God. The enemy will try to weaken your resolve daily. But when you hold on to extreme faith and trust and walk in faith, God will provide in his time. Please don't give up and please become a faith warrior. It is the most amazing walk you will ever walk. I can't express that enough, guys. Oh my goodness. It has just been so awesome to see what God has been doing in our lives. And I just, you know, what we are experiencing and when you grow your faith to where we have grown our faith and guys, we will always be building our faith. But where we are right now, I want everybody to be. It is just such an amazing, amazing place. So I say this because this has been the hardest year for us post-surgery financially, and yesterday God worked an extreme miracle on our behalf. We are not out of the woods, but the heaviest of weights have been lifted from us via God's grace and mercy. No matter if you are walking in a valley concerning your finances, marriage, illness, disease, employment, children, special needs children, housing, food, Whatever it is, guys, God is always bigger, way bigger than, than your struggles. And by pulling into him, reading his word and trusting him, fully trusting him for a good outcome, he will provide. So please, please, please trust and grow your faith muscles. I tell you wholeheartedly, there is nothing better. And if you need prayers or someone else in, is in need of prayer, please leave a note in the comments. That applies to today and always. Please remember that it is not necessary to leave the details. God knows, and that's all that matters. We just need to pray on your behalf. And I'm going to mention this here, too. Some of, say some extra prayers for our dear friend, Pat Kenny. He is uh, battling cancer, and his heart is struggling because of the chemo. And... Just He needs God's love and our love, so please love up on him. And Deborah Kidd is one of our audience members, and she is dealing with cancer also, and I'd really like to have you lift her as well. A dear friend of mine, Andrea, and Mona and Ken are in need of healing and, and God's grace and love and wrapping his arms around them as well. And, you know, God does hear your prayers, and he will answer them in his timing and his way. You just need to trust the, that the outcome is going to be bigger and better than you've ever imagined. And guys, that is just so true. I can't, I can't show that enough. And I hope and pray that through this year's weekly video and what I've been sharing, you know, we have had ups and downs. And I share that very transparently because, you know, it's really important for people to know what we've traveled through. And to see the good, bad, and the ugly. Because when it's always just showing the good, people can't relate. And this applies to you guys, too. I want to share what one of our um, YouTube members said. Um, this is Patty, a pioneer soul. And, and what a pioneer soul she is. What a sweetheart. She said, um, what you shared last week about the testimonies is exactly what I shared with my ladies' study Wednesday night. Our testimony is more than just how we met Jesus. Though that is always a lead-in, and that is always useful if you don't yet have a testimony. So don't not use that. But 
it's about sharing with others the roads we have traveled. And we are to be encouragers to one another and hopefully learn from each other's mistakes and trials. And, and guys, you know, none of us are going to be perfect. We are not perfect. We make mistakes. We've made mistakes. Uh, the point is, is that when you make those mistakes, if you can learn from them and um, not be stuck on the past, but moving forward and, and using that, that, those, that knowledge to positively change your future, that means that you are growing and you are growing your faith muscles through that because, you know, God takes us through all of this stuff. And sometimes it doesn't feel like he's there, right? I know many of you and, and many of the non-believers have a really hard time with that because they struggle. And, and if, if God is so good and loves us, why does he leave us struggle? And that is hard. That's hard to wrap your head around sometimes. But the answer is the enemy belongs on this planet, on this earth. And unless we call to God and ask him and talk to him and thank him, thanking him. I thank him every day. I had happy tears every day this week. And every time I share what happened on Monday with anybody, even just lightly like I'm sharing with you today, it just, it awes me, it catches my breath, and it reduces me to happy tears. God is faithful and God does hear. And Yes, we go through hardships. We are, if you read the Bible, you will understand one of the most important things that we need to know is as a Christian, we are not going to live a, a happy, joyful life here on earth without hiccups. We will have suffering. And part of that is, is suffering for him. And that is one thing that I have chose to do this year. Um, I know that we have lost a lot of audience members since I've started mentioning God in in my in my videos but I really feel like I owe him that. I am alive today because of him. I almost wasn't here in 2016. My organs were shutting down when we hit Georgia. So to have that kind of a testimony and to know that I obviously have a purpose here on earth yet um I, I give him the glory and I am not going to eliminate him from my channel when he is the biggest part of my life. So if you feel there are other people out there that could glean information from our homesteading and self-reliant knowledge as well as our faith, please, please, please share our videos because I love the community that we are growing. You guys are awesome. You guys are just so awesome. And the way you interact with each other, that's what I, makes me happier than anything else, is that we are called to be a community. When one or two are together, he is present. And I feel his presence every week when I do this with you guys. And I am awed every week by the way you guys communicate and love up on each other. So don't stop. And I just think that is just so awesome. Okay, I got to pause. I am in the loft. The wood stove is going downstairs and I feel like my skin is starting to melt off. My sh I'm getting a nice sheen going on here. <laughs> it's warm up here. Okay. Yes, Tammy, praise the Lord. Isn't it awesome? And you know, I just I feel that we all have a story. You know, oftentimes we discredit our stories or we think they're you know, not worthy of sharing. Um or, you, you know, you're, you're humble and you don't, you know, feel like being, maybe it's not that you're humble, it's that you are not ready yet to wear your Christianity on your sleeve or your faith on your sleeve. But being bold for Christ is huge because every day we have the opportunity to reach people for him, whether it's in the grocery store, whether it's in line at the school, dropping off your children. Um, there's so many ways we can do that too. By gifting, by loving. Um, there's so many ways. And um, something else I shared this week on Facebook. I got to go there now. You're going to have to bear with me because I thought I copied the information into my notes, but I did not. Um, I asked a question of our audience. Because I feel 
that there are a lot of people out there that feel abandoned. Um, just like us, they're going through things, right? And maybe they don't have somebody present to help them on that journey and help them, you know. And this is what I asked. I said, if you are struggling right now with something in your life, what is something someone could say or do today that would make a positive influence in your situation in life? Now, I just shared that here too. Feel free to comment on that because this is powerful, guys. This was the responses I got. A big old bear hug. Something as simple as a hug. Do you guys know how powerful a hug is? It's amazing. You know, some days that's all we need. Another one said, I need you here for one certain person. Okay? And that's okay. That's specific. So we have specific needs with individuals. Another one said, I will pray with or for you and then do it. And that's really true too. Um, and that's huge. A huge point to touch on. You know, oftentimes we hear people say, oh, I'll pray for you. And this is kind of calling us out individually. Do we go home and do that or do we take the time to do that? I get a lot of prayer requests, so I've learned to make a note. Um, and I just keep adding to that note so I don't forget people because it's really important. And that really weighs on me because I don't ever want to forget a prayer for anybody. And I pray for our audience all the time as a whole. But that is powerful because sometimes people say, oh, I'll pray for you. And it doesn't seem sincere or you, you may worry that they, they are actually praying for you. So I'm going to call you out on that as the individual. If someone asks you to pray or if you tell somebody to pray, Follow through because prayer is our most powerful tool. And then someone else said, how can I help and actually listen? Because these are people that are hurting or that um, need just a little bit of loving. And sometimes we're so focused on our machines and watching a video or a TV show and we may not be you know, listening to somebody when they really need us to be listeners. So I was grateful that people took the time to answer that because one of the reasons I posted that is, um, you know, we are going through a hard time and we are blessed to have people in our lives that are always reaching out. You guys are reaching out. You guys are sharing your love. I know other people, though, that have been suffering for long periods of time and I've seen their pleas and their cries. And and them go unanswered sometimes. And when you know people are dealing with long-term things like illness, disease, you know, even even marriage struggle, anything, any kind of struggle. Cuz every struggle is a struggle for who's surfing it. You know, we can be a light simply. You know, and um I have a lot of girlfriends and a bunch of you even that are in tune and I think it's really cool when God puts it on our hearts to reach out to somebody because they're really heavy. They keep popping in our mind. You know, why is that? So you pause and you send a message. You've been really heavy on my mind today. I'm not sure why, but I just want you to know I'm thinking of you, sending you some love and lots of prayers. You know, and you come to find that they're in a really, really bad place or something really awful is happening. And I love when God tunes me into that and those people's needs because it's important. We have to be there for each other. Casey says, hi, from Missouri Ozarks. I try to pray for the person immediately so I don't forget to do it later, mainly because I am very forgetful. Fair enough. And you know what? We all are. I forget too. And I think that's why the Holy Spirit has been really um, laying that on my heart because maybe that because I've started creating a note, that's something I needed to share. Like I've said over the last couple weeks, I don't need to prepare for these things anymore. God just presents me with what I need to share, and I think that's really awesome. Whether it's because what I'm going through is pertinent to others or, uh, you know, I don't know, but I, I love the way he works, and that's awesome. And Casey, thanks for being bold enough to share that. And, that, and you know, I like to follow up with people, too, 
that can be a really good ministry all of our own is, you know, when we know people need prayer, to pray for them. That is one of the most powerful tools we have. But then to be able to reach back out to them a week later or something and just check on them. How powerful, even if their, their situation is past, what a very powerful faith um, faith gesture, you know? So, I don't know. I don't know where all this is coming from. This was not part of my notes. So, um, I encourage us to be a light. I encourage each of us to not hide our faith and our Christianity and, and to wear it on our sleeve and to be willing to reach out to those in need. And we, you know, we, <laughs> I'm going to share a little story. Um, we are, we are called to serve and we are called to give. Next week you will find out how dire our, our straits are or were still are, but we're worse. Um, and as you know, our situation is financial. And at church on Sunday, um, I had I had a hundred dollars cash that was for gas in my wallet. And our pastor has been one of our huge, huge prayer warriors. And I love what he said to me. They were talking about the youth. The youth are going on a uh, mission trip to Arizona this summer, so they are raising funds, and um, that nudge the mountain boy, he's been uh, delivering uh, firewood uh, for some local people, and he had some money in his wallet, they were selling um, sticky buns, so they were $15 for 12 sticky buns that you can make in the oven, so he was he was led to do that. Well, they were also talking about doing the Christmas boxes. Um, we Our church does 250 of the um, Samaritan Ministry uh, Christmas boxes that are sent throughout the world and given to children that do not have. And it costs our church like $2,500 to mail those boxes out. And I just felt really led that regardless of our needs and regardless of our situation, that's where that hundred dollars needed to go. <laughs> so when I gave that to the pastor, he looked at me knowing our extreme dire situation and we still hadn't had Monday's miracle. And he said, are you sure? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I said, I am. I said, God's really putting it on my heart. That that's where that's supposed to go. And he said that I was really growing his faith muscle. And I wasn't, you know, it wasn't intentional. But it's through our actions. It's through wearing our faith on our sleeve. It's through listening to the Holy Spirit. It's through reading his word. And it's through sharing our stories. And, excuse me, and, uh, well, there we go. It even gave me time to get a tissue. I don't know what the internet was doing. It was spinning and spinning. Thank you, young man. Well, and my, I am losing power on my phone, so I'm going to quick plug this in. So, do any of you guys have stories you want to share? Here's a moment you can share your story. I would love to hear them. And if you're watching later and you have a story, share it. It's so awesome. I love to be able to hear everybody's stories. Because I know we are not the only one that has stories. Okay, now. Let's see. Just plug this in and hopefully we will stay live. There we go. Okay, so it's just neat when we can be a light and, you know, we all go through different circumstances and uh, it's just nice when we. You know, and I don't even need to know it. I just want to, I just, I just want to keep trying to better and improve other people's lives. Those around me. Hey, 
I, I disappeared again. Sorry, I wasn't getting juice from the uh, outlet. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, the enemy is fighting me today. And I wanted to share that with you guys too. You know, when you're going through a rough time, you can count on the enemy trying to make worse for you. Whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, he will wreak havoc on you. And it was really crazy um, over the last month to watch him attacking my men. Um, I saw him first start with Mountain Ben, and then he went to the Mountain Man, and he was then after the Mountain Boy. And, you know, we have powers to just tell him to go pound sand. I do that often. And uh, you just need to be aware that the enemy does attack, and he will use marriage, finances, health, illness, disease, children, death. He will use all of that to break your resolve. So just remember that, and when things go are rough and you see... Um, let's just say you're going through a rough financial time and all of a sudden then you and your spouse are at wit's end. You don't even know what happened. I do. And when you start seeing that and start being in tune to that, um, it really helps in your situations. It also helps in your faith. It keeps you on more level ground and we have the ability to move mountains and we need to remember that. So those are my thoughts. Now, um, hopefully you guys can um, hear me okay and I'm not breaking up, but I wanted to share something else that one of our followers on YouTube shared, and she's got such a valid, valid point here. I've been talking about wild game meat. I'm jumping a little bit here. I didn't want to forget to mention this. Um, Dorothy um, from YouTube made a point that uh, regarding my comment that game meat is the best non-GMO, grass-fed, hormone-free meat you'll find. I take for granted that I am surrounded by tall pines and that I do not have GMO ridden corn fields and soybean fields and um, canola fields and all that good stuff, beets and sugar beets growing around me. So we do have non-GMO meats here. But if you are living in an area where there is a lot of GMO grown foods and you are shooting directly there in the area, there is a good chance. It's more than likely that you are eating GMO meats. And for me, if I ate that, I would be deathly sick. I, my chickens are eating non-GMO feed because otherwise I can't even eat their eggs. So... It really does make a difference as to what the animal is eating as to how, what you receive from it as well. So if they are eating toxicity, you're going to get toxicity. And I don't say that to panic people, that that's the only area you have to hunt. But if you have areas where you can go a little further away into a wooded area, I mean, deer do travel, but if you're further away from the GMO fields, Boy, it's really fighting with me today. Enemy doesn't want me to tell you where I guess. But that's just something to consider. What our animals eat, what they are injected with, does go into our bodies. Whether you believe that or not, it is a truth. I am a true testament to it. I can be your meter. If I eat something that has, G has eaten GMOs, I will be sick. So... Just keep that in mind, and that was a really good point. And Dorothy did not say that in a nasty way. She was just very honestly pointing that out, you know, and and I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I've totally um, forgotten about the rest of the world here, and that's important for you guys to realize that if that is around you and that's what you're hunting, that is a, should be a concern. So... Um, I talked about faith like a child in the title, that that was what we were going to talk about today. And, you know, children have such amazing faith and, and amazing viewpoint of the world. And through this journey this year, you know, I am finding that I, I just need to be totally dependent. And, and that is just like a child. 
that they are totally dependent on us for their well-being and everything else. And that is what God is wanting us to be. And guys, like I said earlier, that brought me to tears. You know, I can't imagine walking through life and not being on that faith walk. It is just such an amazing walk. And I will say it's not easy. It's hard. It's really hard. You know, um, there were times this year that I just would have loved to throw my pack on my back and hit the woods and never come back. Um, but that's not how life is. That's not how life works. Um, we get worn. We get withered. But the beauty is um, we have something that's very powerful to regain our strength from, if we're willing. And, and walking that true faith walk, uh, I, you know, I, I haven't always walked it. Uh, I've shared many of my stories with you, and I can honestly say that there is nothing better, and I want nothing less for my life. You know, I I am committed, and it is just such an awesome, awesome thing. And you may not get answers to your prayers right away. You may not have your valley resolved quickly. Um, and next week, I've been promising to share the book I'm reading, but I will share that next week when I share my testimony. And next week, I'm also going to give away Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. So make sure you come because financial weights, financial struggles, financial knowledge is a, and lack thereof, is a problem I feel that most people have because schools today don't teach on on things like they did in the past. And when I grew up, I was not taught anything about finances. I had to handle that and find that out on my own through accountants and Dave Ramsey and just muddling through. And um, the statistics are just crazy. And we have so many things that um, make life so much easier that we get lazy. We use debit cards. We use credit cards. We use PayPal. We use our smartphones to make payments now. Um, and we don't ever have that connection with money. So there's so many overdrafts that are occurring because people really don't know how much money they have. And most people don't budget anymore. Um, they just kind of shoot from the hip. And despite our best efforts, um, I've got budgets. I'm the nerd. I'm the computer nerd. I use YNAB, by the way. You can check that out by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Y-N-A-B. And it stands for You Need a Budget. By using that, you get um, a free 32 days, something like that. Um, it's a great program. Very easy to use and very, very inexpensive. I also use spreadsheets. I have an electronic um, spreadsheet for my, my bank registers because I have so many to keep track of with our different businesses and things. But if you don't have a good budget and you don't have a handle on what you're making and what your expenditures are, um, you're, you're going to end up in bad spots, if not now, eventually. And we have tried and tried over the years to do our best and be good stewards of our money. And I feel that we have. There are also, I also feel there are mistakes that we've made. Our last three years were kind of out of our hands due to medical bills and lack of work and being unable to work. So our circumstances are hard because I know what to do, but I couldn't do it. And that's where preparing and planning also come in. And um, I really feel that Dave Ramsey is a really good resource. So I had way back purchased a case of his books to gift because I feel that's a good gift. And um, so somebody next week will get that. So... How many of you have heard of Dave Ramsey, you've Dave Ramsey's practices, follow his podcast? He's a great resource. But faith like a child is really important, and growing our faith muscles could not be more important. And just hanging in there, knowing that we're not alone, I feel that's one of the most important gifts I can give you this year, is that whatever you're going through, you're not alone. And it's not that everybody's suffering. It's not that, you know, you know, I talk about our struggles, but you also see me happy and joyful. That's because it's a choice. It's also 
a result of strong faith because when you have a faith that is so strong that you know at some point God is going to just bust things in pieces and things are going to change and you focus on that instead of focusing on the hardship you're going through, you will be joyful and you will be happy because there's nothing better than that. And that's where building your faith muscle, it, it's endurance. James 1 is a true testament of that. I, those are some of my favorite verses. Haven't heard of Dave, Dave Ramsey, Melody said. Okay, well, I will connect you. When I'm done here, I'm going to put a link to Dave Ramsey's podcast, and you can find him by going to DaveRamsey.com. He has got amazing, he, he himself, um, his, his whole business is, was created based on his own circumstances. Um, he too had to um, file bankruptcy and rebuild. And he has been um, educating for well over 20 plus years. So, you know, when, when the world crumbles around you, you know, it's kind of like making lemon lemonade out of lemons, you know. And um, his practices are really, really good. And he his advice is sound. So we'll connect you, Melody. And um, I just want to encourage you guys to be persevere. Wear your faith and your Christianity on your sleeve. Um, be willing to help others. Be willing to give your last dollar because that's what we're called to do. I know that's scary as all get out. And I will greatly admit to you that when I started doing that three years ago, um, it was really scary. I have since done that hundreds of times where I have given up money, um, gifted money, either to people or to the church. And I had bills due the next week. And, you know, a lot of people say that's really risky. Um, but God has always provided. And even through our situation this year, God is providing. It's a very hard time uh, and rough thing to travel. But it's, it's just amazing. Um, that's how your faith muscles are grown. That's like total trust. And I, I couldn't have done it 10 years ago. But... I won't stop now. So that's why it's important to grow those faith muscles. And I, I just want to encourage you. And I'm not encouraging you to be foolish by any stretch or any, any means. But step out of your comfort zone. I've always told you that on the other side of your comfort zone is amazing things. And that's where it's all at. And once we have the ability to step out of that... Um, comfort zone and into um, our our strong faith it's an amazing thing Chad says it works do it free app awesome yes and um, through Dave Ramsey um, he has a process called the uh, debt snowball and if you are in debt um, he helps you to understand your best avenue to get out of it and to find options other than bankruptcy if, if you're not too far um, in that you have those options. So he's a really, and he does counseling, he does debt counseling, but his resources are, are so wonderful. So next week somebody will get that book. So I also, I, I've been noticing that there's a lot of questions coming through on our YouTube channel and I've been fielding those and also just comments and your guy you guys have been uh, leaving such amazing comments and sharing um, you know your experiences and that's what I want to hear because you guys are the hero and I want to be able to um, help you along the way but also have you help others on the way so don't ever uh, be fearful of sharing and also um, if you have questions, um, please, by all means, an uh, ask them because I would love to answer them live and, and do that for you. Candy says, Dave Ramsey is amazing. If you, if you can be sure and get his book. Oh, awesome. And Candy is uh, a unique woman. She is the one who shared the elderberries with me. Thank you, Candy. And my guys are over there today. Um, 
helping her out as well. So God is good and it all comes full circle. So thank you, Candy, for, for sharing. She's also the um, sweetheart that shared the raspberries with me this summer that I was utilizing. So um, that is exactly what I was talking about earlier in gifting and um, just sharing the love and being there for for people and I feel like she has done that for me so guys don't be afraid to share your questions share your prayer requests um, all of that is so important and we've got such an amazing community of prayer warriors here and um, that is something that I'm so proud of and so excited about so I want to share with you some Bible verses that I pulled for today. Psalms 41 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord and he turned to me and heard my cries for help. He brought me up from a desolate pit out of the muddy clay and set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And guys, that's what it's about. And that is just such a... Uh, empowering, empowering verse to me. <laughs> Candy says, I think that Glenn needs another raspberry pie. Probably. He's always telling me to get in the kitchen and make him some pie. So I might have to do that today. But that verse is so powerful. And what a great promise for us that he will pull us out of the valleys. He will pull us out and, and put our feet on solid ground. And, you know, guys, sometimes... I will say this, sometimes there are lessons to be learned and we are too prideful or too stubborn to realize that we are making mistakes and um, we aren't making the necessary changes we need to make, so we are repeating some of the valleys in our life. So if you see that you are repeating certain valleys, there is a reason for it and, and there's a time for us to put our pride and our selfishness and whatever other negative superlative in there um, and realize that we need to make changes and those changes are just going to um, be such a benefit to us. So, you know, think about that if you're in a valley that is repeating, you know, that maybe you're making financial mistakes, maybe you're making um, mistakes in a marriage or maybe um, you're not gifting where you should be gifting um, whatever the circumstance may be hey Heather just keep your eyes open for that because we need to be willing to learn and we need to be willing to humble ourselves to our mistakes and guys I can't say that enough that it's important to own our mistakes because when once we own our mistakes powerful positive things will happen from that and I'm no exception. I told you, I make mistakes. I am not a perfect person. And I have found um, great relief when I put my pride and, and even my selfishness aside and, and take up my cross, if you will. So here's another verse for you. And this one I like just to send you guys off with. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. That is always my prayer for you guys. And that is always something that just um, settles my heart. Um, to read that myself, um, you know, I wish that for you. But what a, what a blessing it is that God is um, offering the same thing to us. So... I'm going to end on a prayer. Actually, I just saw something in my notes that I do need to share with you today. I want to encourage all of you to go to treyerwilderness.com slash transcendence. You can find the link in the resources. It is at the top of the list. It is a free docu-series. They are the same people that did Food Matters. And, um, geez, the other one just left me. Um, but they have already done two documentaries and on food and on um, healing and guys they are eye-openers and what's really awesome is when you sign up for this this starts I believe November 6th if I'm not and 6th through the 9th 
So if you sign up now, you have time, you will get emails from them, and they will send you 12 minutes video of what you can expect from Transcendence, which is amazing. And I will be watching it and watching every part of it because they have amazing eye-opening materials. And additionally, you will get the other two docu-series in emails as a bonus and they are worth watching, worth watching with your families. Um, the Food Matters is extremely eye-opening. A lot of people don't understand still what GMOs are, um, how our food has been altered, how processed food is altered, and how it affects us, and why so many people are unhealthy today, and struggling, and mental illnesses, and autism, and all that, guys. So it's an amazing free docu-series and I encourage you to sign up for it. So again, it's Transcendence and it's TreyerWilderness.com slash Transcendence. The link is below. Wendy says, Casey MC, you might be interested in joining the Southwest Provident Living Group. I started it two years ago for my family and friends who live in that area. We post frequently about preparedness, food storage, cooking, herbal recipes, forage, and just being frugal. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Wendy. And there you go, Casey. Um, obviously, there were some other comments that were posted. What's unfortunate is I am unable to see everybody that's pre present, and I'm also unable to see all the comments all the time when I'm live, especially if they're coming in together. So do know that if I miss any of your comments, that I will respond to them after the fact. Hey Scott, good morning. So, um, don't hesitate to leave comments when you're watching the replay also because I do follow up with those as well. So I've kept you guys long enough today, but I am really thankful that you guys take the time to come out and join me, watch me, add your two cents. Um, and again, if any of you need prayers, please do not hesitate to leave them below. And you don't need to leave all the details if you're not comfortable with that. If you need prayers, just ask for prayers, guys. That's all we need. And um, I just wish you guys a really awesome week. Build your faith muscles and stay tuned for next week's Dave Ramsey um, Total Money Makeover book giveaway and my testimonial that I'll be sharing next week with you guys. I'm going to say our, our prayer here and then let you guys head out into your day. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for the many blessings that you have blessed our family with and I imagine you've blessed many others. Lord, I just ask today that you open everyone's eyes and help them to see your many blessings because I know so many people miss the blessings that they are gifted daily. Sometimes they're really small and you know they can be missed, but if we keep our eyes open as well as wearing our faith on our sleeve and building our faith muscles, it's just such a powerful walk and I want everybody else to experience that. So help them to see the blessings that they are given throughout the day and to um, add those things into a journal so that they have something to turn to when they have a gray day. And may they be a light to others, whether it's through their testimony, whether it's through how they bless somebody, even just smiling at somebody or waving at somebody as you pass them by. You know, those things are so powerful and we take that for granted. And I want to just remind everybody to focus on that this week. And Lord, just thank you for all you do for us and how you work in each of us and how each of us can be a light and a, an uplifting spirit to the others here and, and a bright Christian, a bright light. Lord, I just ask that you be with Pat Kenny and Deborah Kidd and Andrea and Mona and Ken and Lord, I just ask that you be with everybody that is here today and everybody that watches the replay. Just be with them, love them, help them as they go through their struggles, as they go through their day to day. Just empower them and, and wrap your loving arms around them. And may we be open-minded enough to see when people need our help. And Lord, I just ask that you keep your loving arms around our audience and Keep everyone safe and just help them in their walk. And Lord, just help them prepare for winter and, and whatever comes their way, may they turn to you for direction. 
And Lord, again, I just thank you for what you're going to do because I know it's going to be amazing and you're going to move mountains and shatter mountains to make a point. You do it every day. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do for all of us in each of our lives. And I just ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. So I just wish you a really awesome week. And I hope that in some way I have touched you today. You guys have touched me. Just being present and being a part of our community. And I just ask that if you got something from this, to please share it. And um, don't be afraid to be a light. It's an awesome thing. It's a really awesome thing. And uh, thank you guys for joining. Have a great week. And God bless you.